Diyos. Maraming salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming taglay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay ko po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw ng ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming pagawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. Another year, another scientific episode here in Valenzuela Live Science 6. I'm Ma'am Anna Cunha from Apollonia F. Rafael Elementary School, your science teacher for today. We are now on the sixth week of the second quarter, and I know that you are ready to listen and participate today. So what are you waiting for? Start typing down your name and the name of your school. You can freely use our comment box to ask some questions and for you to participate in our discussion. And don't forget to prepare your science module, notebook, and ball pen for taking some important ideas. Today's lesson is based on the most essential learning competencies in Science 6. Explain how the organs of each organ system work together. And at the end of our lesson, you should be able to identify and describe the functions of the organs of the nervous system and how it works. And describe how the nervous system controls all the organs system of the body. Before we proceed, let us answer the following questions about the circulatory system. And to guide you, we have here jumbled letters that will serve as clues. It is a tube-like structure in the body through which the blood flows. Again, it is a tube-like structure in the body through which the blood flows. The correct answer is blood vessel. Next, it is located at the center of your chest, slightly tilted to the left, and is the pumping organ of the circulatory system. It is located at the center of your chest, slightly tilted to the left, and is the pumping organ of the circulatory system. The correct answer is heart. It is a combination of plasma and cells that circulate through the entire body. Again, it is a combination of plasma and cells that circulate through the entire body. We have here the blood. Good job! And these organs are part of our circulatory system, which serve as the transport system of the human body and is responsible for the distribution of blood and other essential substances throughout the body. Human perform various activities. These activities may require as little effort as writing your name on a piece of paper or maybe as strenuous as doing the laundry. Whether simple or not, the body activities are regulated by the nervous system. The nervous system is the control center of your entire body. It is like a giant communication system that collects and processes information and make sure that appropriate information is sent in all parts of the body. It keeps our organs working properly and allows human to see, smell, speak, move, think, and feel different kinds of emotions. Another function of the nervous system is it receives information from our environment through our sense organs. 
and the brain will interpret the information received and will send signal to our body to respond. Nervous system is composed of two divisions, the central nervous system or the CNS and the peripheral nervous system or the PNS. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. While the peripheral nervous system consists of two types of nerves, the sensory nerves and the motor nerves. Let us first discuss the brain. The brain is the largest organ in the nervous system that weighs less than 3 pounds or 1.3 kilograms. It is one of the most vital organs in the body. It is enclosed in a hard case of bone called skull. Our brain contains billions of neurons that are connected with each other and with all nerves in your body. And did you know that the conscious part of your brain works while you are awake and shut down when you are asleep? But some parts continue to function while you are sleeping to keep you alive. It has three connected parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the medulla oblongata. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It controls voluntary actions, thought, speech, and our memory. It allows us to detect touch, light, sound, odors, taste, pain, heat, and cold. It has an outer covering called cerebral cortex, where most of our brain's processing of information is done. And it is divided into the left and right hemisphere. The left hemisphere directs the right side of our body, while the right hemisphere directs the left side of our body. But most of our brain's activities are controlled by both hemispheres. Now, let's proceed to the cerebellum. Let us take a look at this picture. Why do kids can walk well on the log without falling? The kids in the picture can walk well on the log and do not fall because of our cerebellum. The cerebellum is a small cauliflower-like structure and the second largest part of our brain. The cerebellum controls our ability to make coordinated and balanced motor movements. It allows the brain to send impulses to the different skeletal muscles to make them contract, keeping your body in upright position. The next part of the brain that connects to the spinal cord is called the medulla oblongata. Its function is to release information between the spinal cord and the brain. It also controls many of the involuntary actions of our body, such as breathing, digestion, and heartbeat. It also receives sensory impulses from the receptors in the blood vessels and uses the information to regulate the blood pressure. The other parts of the brains include the midbrain, thalamus, hypothalamus, and the pons. Midbrain acts as a cellular switchboard to keep the different areas of the brain communicating continuously with the other parts of the nervous system. The thalamus processes and coordinates sensory messages from the sense receptor, except the olfactory nerves. The hypothalamus regulates body functions such as thirst, hunger, sleeping patterns, and our emotions. Pons 
is a specialized band of nerve fibers that connects the midbrain with the medulla oblongata. Our next organ, which is part of our central nervous system, is the spinal cord. The spinal cord is a long, cylindrical mass of nerve tissues that passes through the spinal canal. It runs along the dorsal side of the body, which is about as big as our thumb and protected by bones called vertebrae. Its function is to receive impulses from the sensory neurons and conducts these impulses to our brain, which can be interpreted as forms of sensations such as pain, heat, cold, and pressure. It is also called as the information highway of our central nervous system. Now that we are done with the central nervous system, let us discuss the two types of nerves that belongs to our peripheral nervous system. The nerves, the nerve cell is the basic unit of the nervous system. A sensory nerve, also called as an afferent nerve, is a nerve that carries sensory information toward the central nervous system or CNS. And all those nerves which can sense or recognize the stimuli. It can be internal or external stimuli. Well, the motor nerves transmit impulses from the central nervous system to the muscles and glands all over the body. It consists of somatic, nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Nerves are a bundle of long, thin cells called neurons. A neuron consists of a cell body containing a nucleus and two kinds of fine-like, thread-like branches called dendrites and axons. Neurons that gather information from the sense organ and send impulses to our spinal cord and brain for processing are called sensory neurons. While the neurons that carry impulses from the brain or spinal cord to the muscles in our body are called motor neurons. Now that we know the parts and function of the nervous system, then the system controls all the organs in our body. The nervous system maintains internal order within the body by coordinating the activities of muscles and organs, receives input from sense organs, trigger reactions, generating learning and understanding, and providing protection from danger. The nervous system is responsible for sending, receiving, and interpreting information from all parts of the body. The nervous system also monitors and coordinates internal organ functions and respond to changes in the external environment. The central nervous system function as the processing center of the nervous system. Now, let us look and study the table. If you clearly understand our lesson about the nervous system, tap the heart or like button. And to test your knowledge and understanding about our discussion today, let's try this activity. Identify the organs described and just comment down your answer in our comment box. Number one, this system controls everything you do. Five seconds. All right, the correct answer is 
nervous system. Number two, this is the basic unit of the nervous system. What do we have here? Five seconds. You're right. The correct answer is nerves. Question number three. It is the control center of the nervous system. Comment down your answer. Five seconds. Good job. We have here the brain. Number four. The largest part of our brain. Five seconds. The correct answer is cerebrum. And the part of the brain that connects to the spinal cord. Five seconds. Comment down your answer. You are right. We have here the medulla oblongata. You did a great job, grade 6 learners. I'm glad that you learned a lot today. So now I think that is, it is the right time to accept some questions related to our topic in our hashtag Ask Your Science Teacher time. So what are you waiting for? Comment down your questions. 20 seconds. All right, for our question number one, how many neurons do we have in our body? The human body is made up of trillions of cells, cells of the nervous system called nerve cells or neurons, are specialized to carry messages through an electronic chemical process. The human brain has approximately 86 billion neurons. Amazing, isn't it? And for our second question, what will happen if our brain stops working? The answer is, if the brain stops working, all autonomic functions cease. This would result to death. Indeed, the time flies so fast. But don't worry, kids. I know that tomorrow you will have your follow-up discussion about the nervous system together with your science teachers, so don't forget to attend your virtual class. But before we end our discussion, let us sum up the important points in our lesson and remember the following. The nervous system is the control center of our entire body. It is like a giant communication system that collects and processes information and makes sure that appropriate information is sent in all parts of the body. The nervous system is composed of two divisions, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, while the peripheral nervous system consists of the two types of nerves, the sensory nerves and the motor nerves. The brain is the largest organ in the nervous system, and it is enclosed in a hard case of bone called skull. The spinal cord is called as the information highway of the nervous system. It receives impulses from the sensory neurons and conducts these impulses to our brain, which can be interpreted as forms of sensation such as pain, heat, cold, and pressure. And the nerve cell is the basic unit of the nervous system. 
So for our homework, let us answer the what's more part in your module in science on page 20. Again, answer the what's more part in your module in science on page 20. So before we end, let me leave you this quotation. Whatever we plan in our subconscious mind and nourish with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality by Earl Nightingale. Again, I'm Ma'am Anna Punya. Thank you for watching and have a great day and stay safe everyone. See you again next week.